Hey, hey, Alpha fam. Welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over all of the uh, front running on the chart. You do see just a uh, spread of green on the uh, crypto market. And so uh, it is kind of like, uh, you know, all these uh, altcoins are trying to tell us something. XRP is bouncing, Quant is bouncing, Algo is bouncing, Maker is bouncing. A lot of these coins seem to want to do something and they seem to believe that Bitcoin may come along with them. Whether they're correct or not, uh, we'll find out. Uh, however, uh, you know, uh, sometimes these things do go off just when there's stability in the market also. And since the last couple of days have been relatively uneventful, uh, you know, that has given a lot of these coins just some freedom to essentially express themselves. And uh, others are just part of uh, pump and dumps or uh, just uh, kind of... Uh, kind of that Ponzi mania that goes on where uh, people just FOMO in. Uh, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how we closed uh, in stocks on Friday because it wasn't the best look, right? It wasn't the best look. Now, the good thing about this is that usually when you have a deep red, uh, you know, day or two, uh, you know, it does tend to allow for some oversold conditions, which statistically would lean in the favor of a bounce. So when you see this much red on the uh, chart, and then the markets kind of have a chance to catch their breath, then you might expect some type of turnaround you know, in the following week, right? Or whenever uh, markets have a chance to uh, reopen, where you know, the deals can be found, right? And so a lot of people might be looking for deals right now in the stock market, at least for trades, even if we have continuation to the downside later on, there are going to be a lot of uh, shoppers looking for uh, some trades, which could push the market up as a whole. So uh, let's look out for that. And then, of course, on Monday, uh, in our uh, market news, uh, we do have just a bunch of Fed speakers from all of these different cities. Of course, uh, you know, uh, you know, these Fed or reserves, they don't actually all have one unified policy. And so these different, uh, you know, Fed presidents, they are important what they're saying, and they can have some impact on the markets when you take them as a whole. So when they're all talking at once, uh, you know, it can be good just to uh, get a uh, thumb on the pulse of what they're saying. And that uh, continues a little bit into Tuesday. But what I'm really eyeballing here, guys, is, uh, you know, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell is going to speak on digital finance on Tuesday, September 27th. And I feel like this could be a moment that the crypto market is looking towards uh, quite strongly and could be a make or break moment, especially as we see Bitcoin along its uh, diagonal uh, macro downtrend. And so if we go over to the charts, uh, you can see my EMAs uh, just kind of getting their spidery tendrils out there. And, uh, you know, one good thing is that we're starting to have this slowdown on the uh, kind of that kind of spidery look of all these different tendrils going everywhere on the daily. And, you know, this this does start to feel like to me that um, there's the possibility for some sideways action coming up. Um, now, that could be up or sideways. You know, I mean, we could have a capitulation and, you know, we kind of had this kind of, you know, slowing down look right here also, right? You know, and right here also. And we just like completely capitulated. So that could happen again. But without a mean reversion, it just uh, it starts to feel a little bit off. And so I'm looking at all these bullish drives of uh, divergence and I'm just thinking, well, you know, we're holding that. And while I didn't have really much to say for the last few days, and so I've just left my uh, previous analysis up because it's actually held perfectly intact. 
what we can see is that we challenged the lows um, on the uh, dailies for the last couple days, and we really didn't do anything wrong. So the reason why I'm looking for a uh, or anything shocking, the reason why I'm doing an update is, you know, it looks like to me that we're making an effort to try to squeeze to the upside. And, you know, uh, when we were over here, of course, all of the metrics were looking fairly bearish. Of course, we still uh, have a high risk zone here. Uh, let me throw on some lines to show you what we were looking at previously, where this candle and this candle were the ones that I was analyzing in the last couple videos. And I was just saying, they look very sick to me. This whole setup looked very sick. It looked like we were going to get slapped down. And sure enough, we did. And we tested the lows with this wick right here, right? And then we tested it again here. And we actually made a higher low off of this. And so as this structure starts to get built, we start to see this broadening wedge kind of, uh, you know, filling out. And this is really what you want to see if you're going to have an inverse head and shoulders. If you're going to have a uh, broadening descending wedge, you really want to see that uh, right shoulder, even though it's an upside down, it's an inverted one, you want to see that the sh right shoulder really take a nice shape uh, to the neckline. And the problem that we were having over here is that we failed on the neckline. And I did uh, point this out to you guys, uh, not really sure why this is, uh, man, trading view is messing with my charts again. Man, that's really annoying. But uh, well, look at that. On the four hour, it conforms perfectly. On the daily, it just looks like crazy. Like, uh, okay, but uh, that may be for how the uh, candles are averaged. But uh, man, I just, uh, that's, it just annoys me that I can't, uh, can't trust where these lines are lining up. But uh, guys, uh, look here. So uh, one thing uh, that we had on this uh, formation back here right was uh, let me make these uh, lines a bit darker there turn off our uh, good old emas and then uh, let's just get rid of this circle because uh, we're actually over here now doing something quite interesting and different which is why i'm making this video to keep you guys uh, abreast of uh, what's going on and uh, you know you can see here guys like we have this uh, this channel we have this broadening descending wedge here right and uh the measured move for it you know it just uh, depends on how we align all of these things up uh let's go ahead and get the broadening descending wedge instead of the channel and so we have the stray wick right we have this stray wick right here right which i've marked out with this uh, red dashed line here but we also have this inverted head and shoulders which has a measured move up to, uh, you know, about 21,000, which would be right in line with our barrier, right? Our barrier right here of our macro downtrend. And so that's one of the uh, formations that I wanted us to keep following into the new week. And so I'm going to start off just by commenting on that inverted head and shoulders. Uh, it was not invalidated, okay? So uh, it's not invalidated. We haven't dropped below the shoulder yet. We're just kind of meandering. No, we didn't like sit above the uh, neckline and that's what we need to do, okay? But if this can, if this can push up and, oops, and if uh, this shoulder, we can just kind of, think about it like this way, okay? I mean, I know this isn't ideal or anything, but we're really trying to talk about price action. We're not trying to talk about, you know, a pattern. No one cares about patterns. Who cares about patterns? I'm looking for price action. And so if we see price action getting on top of this neckline of our pattern, and if we get on top of the, uh, you know, the resistance of this uh, broadening descending wedge, which we've done it before, right? This wick is kind of proof of concept that we've done it before. Then this measured move could still have some uh, validity. Now, this is a weaker uh, head and shoulders 
than if we had just, you know, robustly broken out here and then retested and then gone. Uh, this obviously has had time to diffuse. It's inside of a resistance zone, and so it can easily get rejected. We're right here at the level, at the resistance level of this broadening descending wedge, and so we can get rejected here. You can even see that as I'm uh, speaking to you that we're getting a little bit of a rejection. So proof of concept, like right as I'm describing it. But, uh, you know, guys, uh, this is uh, pretty strong. And what I wanted to show you that was interesting is that it's coming off of this kind of downtrend that we have here, which this wick and uh, this high right here, uh, which is still higher than that one. So we're just going to watch what's going on. Uh, that these three points created a trend and we sort of broke out of that trend did a retest, and now we're bullishly bouncing off of the retest of the breakdown of that trend, and that, uh, you know, this kind of pattern that was formed here is a very, very janky uh, quadruple witching, Jerome Powell Fed rate increasing kind of, uh, you know, descending wedge, falling wedge over here, right? And so if we get a breakout, you know, this pattern still could imply some type of a pop-up. And uh, that would not be out of line with how Bitcoin behaves when it does tend to uh, fall off of that macro downtrend. So even if you believe that Bitcoin doesn't have the energy to break this macro downtrend, we still can see that it often one, two, three challenges that line before breaking down. One, basically two, three, right, before breaking down. One, you know, two, you know, and basically three, right? So this was also kind of like a triple crown here. Had a, had a bunch of points up here, and then overall it had over a bigger period of time. And then same thing here, right? We're, we kind of got a test here. Not really, kind of did. But then we only got one really good test right, of the whole zone, of the strength of that line. And then we basically got a test from this wick, and we're basically doing it the third time. So this third touch, and it's already going into this zone. And I want to uh, just kind of explain to you the importance of the thickness of this zone. Again, guys, it's not just a line. It's a thickness. It's a zone. And so you can see that um, there's a lot of price action that goes into this zone, right? Here we bounce off of it, but here we get a lot of price action through it, right? Follow down to the next era. Look at all this price action in this red zone. You know, we broke down from it, and here we just bounced off of it, but that just proves that the zone is real, okay? And then if you get inside of it, you can chop around quite a bit. You know, here we got rejected from a diagonal, kind of front-running it, but uh, same principle. Same principle, like the thickness of this zone, like the reality of this zone was proven. Rejected right off of it. Rejected from it, and then we had the energy to pass through it, right? So we're swimming in that jello, and uh, you can kind of get a lot of price action inside of there. Here, just rejected, 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 kind of broke through it, put a little crack in it. And now we're seeing a candle like trying to creep its way back in because we've kind of cracked it over here. We cracked it over here. And so, uh, you know, this thing is just kind of sensing to see if there's another crack. And if there is any uh, cracks, any uh, chinks in this armor, then uh, those uh, weak points are are going to allow price action to swim around in there. And what could that imply? Well, I think there might be a hard limit at first, and so let's just take the measured move of this head and shoulders, bring it down to where we are, and hey, look at that. So probably 20,600, 20,700 is going to be our max. Uh, if we get, you know, a, a while's you know, a while down, if we keep chopping down before we break up, then it could be, you know, even lower. It could be uh, 20,000, you know, 500, right? Something like that. And this would pretty much also be the measured move for the uh, the uh, broadening descending wedge, where you're going to take it from pretty much the uh, first. Um, 
you know, the first uh, valley creation, right? The, the first kind of apex of that or breakdown of that. And so, uh, you know, in that zone, like right up here, would be a reasonable target um, as long as we're able to kind of pierce the veil, right, of this of this uh, rejection zone, of this danger zone, of this just, uh, you know, off limits, right? Uh, so, uh, guys, like this zone, it's not meant for price action, but if you get in there, you can swim around it before getting a hard rejection. And the cool thing about this is that on the uh, Bitcoin 24-7 exchange, uh, our, our momentum zone has come down significantly. As this thing has slowed down and put in a bit of a floor and started to round up, uh, you can see that our momentum zone has actually uh, lowered quite significantly. And so we, have, uh, we still have a pretty high uh, requirement to take out this uh, wick and to you know get above this kind of threshold up here of uh, 20,500 that's really what we want to see to get above to have any type of like macro sense of bullishness but just on the daily if we can close the day above this teal box that i have and look we're already there like, we're already there. This is based upon uh, today, okay? Like, this is all updated, guys. Uh, if we can sit on top of this box, then we can swim around in this area. We're going to be uh, squarely on top of our momentum zone. And by the way, the, this is uh, a calculated zone. This is calculated, okay? So this is actually relevant, really. It's not just something that I'm making up. Uh, this is going to be us breaking, uh, you know, our negative structure on the RSI on the daily. And then, so we're also going to have the RSI and our MACD and our Stokes all in agreement. And that's a good place to be on the daily, okay? Uh, we're still going to look fairly weak underneath the uh, weekly four EMA. And so, yes, we want to get above this two-day Stoke around a 197. Uh, 19,700. Uh, and yes, you know, we want to take out this previous wick high. And then we're going to be looking uh, much better, right, on a macro perspective. But just for some bullishness for this week, and even possibly to uh, pop all the way up to, um, you know, 20,000, you know, 600, 20,500. I mean, uh, yes, holding on to this um, basically brick right here is super important. Like Mario Brothers, going to use it and then uh, just kind of punch up, right? And we're kind of already doing that. But uh, again, guys, like this is contingent upon the end of the day. So on the 24-7 exchanges, Bitcoin is doing what it needs to do to have a couple bullish days. And this could catch a lot of bears by surprise who just kind of gave up their positions uh, instead of just letting this formation um, come out. Now, I'm on the four hour right now. Um, let me put my watermark on so you guys can see in the background, uh, you know, the coin and also the time, right? And, uh, um, but, uh, but this box right here is daily. These uh, dashed lines are daily. The white one is two days. And then the uh, blue ones are the uh, weekly EMAs. And so all of this stuff, you know, the more of these you can get on top of, the stronger you are. Uh, but for the day, I would say that uh, Bitcoin is looking good unless we get a hard rejection right here at this resistance of this downtrend of this broadening descending wedge, which I've already pointed out, uh, corresponds to the neckline of that inverted head and shoulders on the four hour. And so um, guys, like this is what we're looking for. That's why I'm making this video. Uh, now, if we uh, shift it back to the daily, uh, you can understand the other reason that I'm showing you this is because look, this, um, this inverted head and shoulders, right, is also printing on the uh, on the uh, broadening descending wedge itself, which is basically validating the broadening descending wedge. Okay, now this this uh, shoulder isn't lower than this shoulder, and that's your kind of that's your pretty much your key clue that this is a broadening descending wedge, not an inverted head and shoulders. But I'm just saying that uh, if you look at how the structure is being built, 
Uh, this is now validating. And so what did I tell you about this channel? We go by uh, conditions and confirmations. We don't go by, uh, oh, I'm just making this call, or hey guys, I believe it's going to do this, or I have a gut feeling. No, no, I looked at the metrics for the last couple days, and I said, nope, not going to happen. Next day, nope, not going to happen, based upon the conditions and whatever confirmations that we had. But now uh, we have uh, conditions of bullishness on the day not any higher time frame than that just on the day right and uh you know uh the uh, confirmation of that would be to put a, a candle on top of this line for our breakout and then uh, perhaps another one that just uh, cements it there right and then that would uh, lead us naturally into a momentum play to the upside. And if we look at our two-day, right, if we look at our two-day um, volatility, you can see we're starting to expand. This is really uh, janky, really crooked, really just kind of just as choppy as you could make it, basically. Not these beautiful, curved, you know, sloping lines that uh, I prefer to see in volatility. These aren't the type of plays that I like to play. Like, this volatility is confusing the F out of me. This is really volatile. This is volatile for volatility, okay? And this is a nice, clean play. This is disgusting, guys. It's a very hard as, an, as a volatility trader, uh, which uh, is one of the methods I use for trading to play this kind of chop. And so uh, I will have to uh, assess if this is coming down and we're going to do a double bottom or something, kind of like this formation, maybe right here. Uh, it's just very sloppy, okay? So I don't trust this move fully. But um, it does give me hope that as that volatility expands, that if we can keep these zones on the uh, daily, and uh, especially if we can get over this uh, two-day, right? Not today, uh, the, the two-day uh, Stokes um, up here. Like this is the next, this is the next block for uh, Mario to jump on. Okay, so this is. I'll color this one white to go along with the two day and I'll color this one teal the daily just to go along with the daily momentum and so here's the second block for Mario to jump on now Mario is mid flight he's jumping and he has to land on this uh, you know he has to like land above it or on it at least um, you know within it or above it uh, for this play to uh, make sense and then he has to jump to the next block and capture that one in order for us to get that two-day uh, volatility in our favor as well, right? And then that's going to naturally lead into higher time frames. But, uh, you know, we could just do like a leap up, you know, punch a block above us, you know, just uh, get a uh, mushroom out of that and then fall the way back, you know, all the way back down, uh, potentially into some dangerous water or fire pit or a, a piranha plant or something. But uh, guys, like, uh, you know, we're doing something good, at least uh, for uh, Bitcoin right here. Now on CME, it's a different picture, actually. This thing is very interesting in its own right because we do have this like massive indecision, uh, you know, looking kind of... Uh, you know, candle on the two day. But if we jump down to the daily, we are seeing a, a, a pump that still is conforming to our fractal. The market is open for CME. CME didn't do anything crazy or unexpected. We are just kind of like holding this floor that we've been slowly piercing. And what I don't want to see is a rejection here and to keep this slope going down because on CME, we actually have a head and shoulders that looks to the downside and the uh, measured move of that uh, head and shoulders, which by the way, this is not a perfect one either. Like uh, all of these uh, formations that we're looking at, like these are imperfect uh, because this has just been such a volatile couple of weeks, but uh, that would lead us significantly down. If this is a head and shoulders that does end up playing out, it could lead us all the way down to uh, 12,000 and uh, but uh, one thing that we have in our favor is that this isn't the most valid head and shoulders. Uh, the left shoulder is lower than the right shoulder. And so that does lower the chances that it's valid. And um, you could say that we tested the neckline of this or that we're testing it right now. 
um, because it really depends on, you know, these are just wicks from a higher frame uh, perspective. And so, you know, we're going to have to watch this carefully. So what I did for a CME, because this is the professional exchange, right? The professional exchange is piercing downwards. And so they're kind of front running the 24 seven exchange, which is, you know, basically all the moon boys and everything, but the uh, professional exchanges are all the professional traders and the professional traders are kind of saying like, ah, you know, we're kind of dipping our toe lower. We're thinking we might uh, go a bit lower. And so the level that we don't want to lose is down here, right? We don't, we definitely don't want to lose this kind of uh, $18,000 area or we could uh, just validate this uh, head and shoulders, even if it's a sloppy one, to the downside, or some type of formation to the downside. Um, this could also be a uh, broadening wedge here, which could then have a measured move, uh, you know, if we take just something like this, right, you know, down to 15,000-ish. Uh, you know, I mean, these are just the estimate, guys, like, uh, it really just uh, depends um, because this is such a sloppy formation, okay? Like uh, we could also be talking about just kind of a sloppy rectangle as well. But the but the point is, like I have the momentum zones uh, for our key levels for CME as well. And so the Mario block that we need to jump on top of is right here, basically, um, you know, above where the MACD continuation would be to the upside. So we're already there. We need to sit on top of this, right? Kind of break this fractal essentially, and uh, that would that would put us in an excellent spot. Now, ideally, we would want to be over 19,400, right? We'd want to be over 19,500, like that'd be our next move. But um, just if, if as long as we can sit on top of this area, uh, we'll be good on CME too. It's just guys, like this is a completely different look. Okay, than what's going on on 24/7. So there's, you know, there's just a difference, and I just, just want to make sure that you understand that there's a there's a weird kind of divergence going on here. And while uh, Bitcoin on, uh, you know, the 24/7 could have uh, some type of uh, head and shoulders to the upside, um, I'm just not seeing the same type of structure on CME. So uh, I guess, mm, I mean, if we really wanted to just use some type of imagination here, I mean, this, uh, you know, you, you, you really shouldn't do this, I guess. But um, I mean, you know, if we just want to imagine some type of broadening wedge or some type of inverted head and shoulders. Well, there you go, right? And this is just the uh, Jerome Powell nonsense, right? So, you know, our measured move, again, 20,500. And that would put us in line with being over this momentum zone and, you know, putting us in play to potentially challenge our downtrend. Uh, guys, uh, just trying to think my way through this, so um, bear with me because it's just a weird, kind of a weird divergence there, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over to Ethereum because Ethereum is another one of those coins that does have that kind of leadership role. Uh, you know, let's just uh, be uh, pretty clear about it here. Uh, Ethereum is doing what it needs to do for today. You do see another one of these janky kind of, you know, kind of pseudo head and shoulders, these kind of broadening descending wedges that are starting, that we're starting to see on all these charts. Uh, you know, and they're interrupted by these weird wicks, which can possibly invalidate them in, you know, I mean, not, it's not too serious, but it, it's just weird. Okay, guys. And then, uh, you know, we can see that there could be a potential play on Ethereum, you know, to the upside up here, which would get it above this uh, zone that it needs to kind of hold, right? You can see this kind of teal background, right? So that's just uh, one of its zones that it, you know, if it, if it loses this zone, it probably drops down to this one. But uh, this pump would safely put it above uh, support of that zone. 
where it, it can have a chance to bounce potentially to this zone up here, right? I mean, it could chop around and drop later, or it could bounce. It would just, it would, at least it would have the option to do that. But as long as it hangs out down here, and, you know, it could easily lose momentum or recheck the bottom and lose momentum and go to the downside. And so we really want to see um, Ethereum close no lower than around 1300 And, you know, sitting on top of uh, 1330 would be the best look for Ethereum, okay? By the end of the day, guys, all these zones are updated, so... Uh, this is valid for the uh, end of Monday. And then uh, Ethereum uh, CME, uh, basically same story, but uh, just like Bitcoin CME, you know, the the pattern is just much weaker here, right? It's just much weaker, but we still can make out, you know, this kind of broadening descending wedge. It's not beautiful or anything it has that weird stray wick it's got that kind of lovely like inverted head and shoulders inside of it that people look for and so yeah i mean we could take a, a measured move for that one if you want to do the head and shoulders it's going to be a bit too tall uh not too tall in this case it's going to be um around here uh, they have the same target actually so Let's just use the broadening descending wedge, 1480. And let me go back to Ethereum. I think uh, I was using the head and shoulders. I should have been using the broadening descending wedge breakdown. Ooh, okay. Yeah, they do have the same measured move. Uh, I, I, I didn't see this at first, but uh, yeah, we do have this same broadening descending wedge structure here. So... Yeah, it looks pretty solid on Ethereum. So I am going to give that to Ethereum. And uh, even conservatively, we're still talking about the same targets. So I'll give both of these structures to Ethereum. And if there is bullishness, then we're going to be looking for this zone up here. Okay. Now, again, like we work on validations and confirmations. So... I mean, uh, conditions and confirmation. So the condition is going to be that we break out of the neckline of this inverted head and shoulders and that we break out of the uh, the top slope of this um, broadening descending wedge. And then we have to really make sure that we're sticking and holding above 1330 because that's going to get our RSI to cross its... Um, it's a EMA, and so then we're going to have our Stoke, our RSI, and our MACD all in agreement, and that's going to be a fairly bullish look for Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has its own little downtrend here, which, uh, you know, it doesn't pose any problem. So, you know, if it wanted to pop up, you know, that would just be a check back. It'd be a pretty healthy check back. We also have this kind of midline kind of structure in here. Uh, I, I guess we could just go like that. You know, it's not perfect, but something like that. And so, yeah, I mean, that would be in line with kind of a resistant area as well. So, yeah, I mean, very much possible, very much possible to get a bounce out of this, guys. And this is why I tell you, don't be a perma bull and don't be a perma bear. Uh, just be a clever little alpha monkey because there could be this opportunity and everyone thinks we're going to drop to hell right away, but we can have these little temporary uh, mean reversions. We can have these uh, little plays even on the way down. So don't be over bearish either. Uh, guys, it, it just we are playing in the danger zone on Bitcoin, okay? So you don't have to take these trades. But, uh, you know, the flip side is you don't want to be like a perma, you know, bear um, if you are taking trades because, you know, what if you're wrong, right? Like, what if you're wrong? And so I'm not going to be a perma bear about that. So, uh, yeah, guys, so for uh, Ethereum, uh, CME and Ethereum, they're both in agreement there. And likewise... The uh, downtrend here on Ethereum. Let's just look to see if there's anything. Mm, just, gosh, Ethereum is so weird. 
let's see. Yeah, yeah. So on Ethereum CME, that that diagonal limitation that there might be on the charts, um, it's much more logical actually on on CME than it is on Ethereum 24/7 exchange. As we can definitely see, as we can definitely see, the measured move here on a breakout would really enter into resistance. So this is actually pretty confluent with the uh, move on Ethereum. So I don't give any one of these charts a, uh, you know, a preference right here. Just that we are going to be looking to see if we can break out and hold uh, this area. But the the, the thing is for uh, CME. The condition is a little bit tighter. Like we need to get above this line, okay? So I wouldn't really count on making that full move unless we can really hold above 13.77. And, uh, um, you know, maybe that's going to come down a bit. But... Uh, Uh, no, 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 13.77. So for, uh, you know, uh, Ethereum CME, 13.75, that's going to be the Mario block we have to jump on top of, okay, guys? Like, if you want to see the top of this, got to get above that block. Otherwise, you know, we could just deflect off of our momentum zone. You know, just kind of, like, test the momentum zone and then uh, fall down. But if we get on top of that block then uh, Mario can potentially jump to the uh, to the next level. All right, guys, I'm spending enough time on Ethereum, so let's move over to uh, S&P 500. Um, I hope you like uh, how I'm kind of uh, building up this, uh, you know, narrative for these different type of coins and assets uh, and how I'm explaining how momentum can work. Guys, in, in trading, momentum is everything, okay? Like a... Uh, Yes, I trade volatility. Uh, yes, I trade, um, you know, all of these different things. But behind everything is momentum. You know, momentum is everything in trading, okay? It's just behind everything. So if you can figure out momentum, then you can probably trade better, you know, than most people, okay? Uh, if You know, most people who have no clue about momentum. And that's why I'm trying to create my style of trading and uh, my style of teaching also to uh, center around momentum. And uh, really what I'm starting to develop is a way of teaching and a way of trading that's uh, quite different than others. Of course, I use the same, uh, the same tools, but I'm trying to pull, you know, things out of uh, traders that uh, I respect, even though sometimes I question, uh, you know, some of the things that they're looking at, but, um, you know, different traders that I respect, and then I'm trying to integrate that into my own style so that I just don't copy anyone, and so that I think for myself. And I hope as you guys watch my videos, and that as you learn from other sources that are out there, that you do the same thing. And don't just trust what uh, one YouTuber says, right? But make sure that you have a comprehensive understanding of what you're doing so that you can react at the right moment when you're pulling the trigger to uh, buy or sell because obviously no one's going to be there to make that decision for you except for you. And within, you know, four hours or an hour or a couple days, you know, Conditions can change radically compared to whoever's giving a call or whoever's even setting conditions. And even the confirmation area could change if something in the world changes, like if they increase interest rates, right, or something like that. Then that could change the whole that could change the whole premise of the trade, right? So we have to watch out. And that's why I also integrate macro into all of it so that uh, we can understand these things. And that's why I watch Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve and uh, why I watch the European Union and Asia and all of these things and the stock market to try to bring it all together. So if we look at the uh, S&P uh, 500, 
you know, we can see that we have uh, broken those key zones that I was talking about, which was really that 3,800. It was the line in the sand, guys, that I had I had drawn for you. Uh, I gave you the master key to the market, and we lost it. We lost 3,800. So now we basically went into a panic. Like you can see, like this was this was an incredibly intense sell-off on the stock market. I mean, look at this drop, guys. That's an insane drop. That is, it is as harsh as this capitulation moment, okay? So it's like we had a second capitulation that was perfectly parallel to it. And, um, you know, we really didn't see that except for that first uh, capitulation. So guys, the market isn't getting more stable. It's getting, it's just as scared at any one moment. And you know, you could get two of these in a row someday. Like, we're blessed that we get these W formations, but I need to really prepare you that as this structure forms and as time goes on, you, you can see that we're operating in a very limited area right here, right? And then here we're operating in a, you know, kind of a small area, but extended and then here it's getting even a bigger area right and so you're seeing like double right like this kind of double fall right first we had like a half fall and then we had like a one fall and then we had a double fall and now we're getting into that area where we could really have one two three falls you see you see what i'm looking at here uh alpha fam like uh like half a fall one fall going sideways, one, two falls, right? Going sideways, one fall. What we could see, like we could see a bounce, but we could see a two fall, we could see a three fall, right? Like uh, it gets very dangerous from this point on. And so if you guys like, uh, you know, have heard of Elliott waves or whatnot, uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, um, some of these, you know, like the third wave down is often the biggest wave because that's where you get like those triple falls coming into play. Like the first wave is just like made up of like these kind of corrections. And then the second wave is just a reaction rally or some type of mean reversion. And then the third leg is really where you get all of the capitulations putting together. And so if you guys think that we've seen capitulation yet, you could be wrong, right? And then you can get like a, a fifth wave or something, right? Which tends to be short and kind of define the bottom. So, and sometimes it's a double bottom. It's not even, you know, the fifth wave isn't even that that big and so that's kind of uh you know what is going on with those type of elliott wave theories um you know they get into a lot of fibs and stuff i'm not an elliott waves expert i'm just you know i can see the price action okay like i can just use the price action i don't need like elliott waves and stuff but if you want to understand um where a lot of that is coming from like just imagine how we're falling down and you can imagine these as legs, half a leg, one leg, one, two legs, right? One, two, three legs. And then, you know, the fifth the fifth um, Elliott wave here is just the bottom of the market, right? Wherever it might end up being. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want to uh, get too far ahead of us because we can catch ourselves in some of these areas, right? We don't actually have to go all the way to the bottom. Um, mostly this is going to be a global financial crisis. This is going to be if it's like a really deep recession. And this can be if we have, you know, that, that soft landing that Jerome Powell really wants, right? The Federal Reserve really keeps lying to us and saying there's going to be a soft landing. But most likely, you know, we should probably be looking at this area, you know, even if we're just, you know, Guys, there's a trend line down here. <laughs> there's a very high likelihood we test the bottom of that line. And if we don't, then beautiful. But um, this this parabolic action was all a bubble. It was all a bubble that came out of this money. So we should at least expect that we come back to that area. Okay? Um, and then the market can overreact because we might have because we didn't have a recession back here. We only had scariness, 
right? Scariness. Scariness isn't a recession, but now we have scariness plus a recession. And so that's why we can get into that global financial crisis territory. If you just want kind of a, a primer on, uh, you know, the basics of uh, what I'm expecting. Uh, guys, a lot of people disagree with me. A lot of people think that the bottom of the market is already in and we're going to see some major bounce here. And uh, I mean, like a macro bounce. I agree we could have a mini bounce, but a lot of people think we're going to have a macro bounce. Uh, I'm not on board with that. Um, we'll find out. But uh, I will give you some uh, clues that I do think that they, we are it is possible for us to get a bounce. Um, let me turn on my EMAs, see if I can show you something. Uh, let's see, the 800, now we've broken through that. Let's go to the weekly, just see if we can find, oh, look at this, look at this, like we've struck gold, guys. So on the weekly, look at this, a nice bounce off the 200, another bounce off the 200, and this candle looks, well, you know, this is a weekly candle. It has four more days. Uh, very weak. It's it's not showing the type of buying pressure we would like to see. It's not reclaiming this wick very quickly. And I told you, momentum is everything in trading. So uh, it's not doing its job. But there's a chance. There's a chance that it could, right? And bouncing off of the 200, you know, it's a pretty nice thing to do. Just ignore the scary wick on COVID. We pretty much bounced off the 200. Look at this one in the 2018 crisis, just to bounce off of the uh, 200. Looky here in a 2016, nice bounce off of the 200. And, you know, we kind of uh, held on to it, did a little monkey bar swing, you know, dipping below, a little gymnastics, like swinging below, swinging above, swinging below, holding on. Uh, you know, back here in uh, 2011. And then, of course, uh, you know, 2008 was the uh, global financial crisis when banks were failing. So, yeah, we <laughs> we kind of lost it here. Okay, guys, like, I'm not going to lie. This can happen. This can happen. This can happen. <laughs> okay? Like, it can happen. So... Yeah, I don't want to scare you guys. Um, my belief is it's going to happen, that we break below this 200. But but to not be a perma bear, like we do have to be open-minded that even if we have some scariness down below it and we break below it, there is a chance to recover, right? Like there is a chance. Like you're saying there's a chance. Like there's a chance, right? Like we could bounce right now magically and everything's just great in the market like magically right um maybe or we could wick down and then bounce more likely and then uh you know everything has to go wrong for us to get down here it just uh, everything looks like it's going wrong right china looks sick europe looks sick there's like world war 3 brewing up guys like not only in uh, russia and europe but also in asia and uh, you know the us is going into the recession the us dollar is going to like destroy currencies across the world because nobody believes in their currency they only believe in the dollar and so uh, this U.S. dollar dominance, you know, it's not really the fault of the U.S. It's, you know, it's you guys out there outside of the U.S. demanding dollars. You guys all want dollars. Here in the uh, States, you know, <laughs> you know, we're doing our best just to uh, fight inflation, right? And uh, really, it, the problem is that there are other governments like uh, the U.K., which are doing stimulus, you know, during a time of high inflation or like Japan or like some of these other regions, they're just they're just having weird policies or like Turkey, right? Like they have an inflation of 80 percent, right? Or 90 percent or something like that. Something insane. Like they're just not doing the things that you need to do to balance inflation after that hyper bubble created during uh, COVID, right? Like it's not just uh, the Trump administration that spent like nine trillion bucks and put the U.S. on the path to hyperinflation. Like that's fair game to criticize that stuff. But hey, at least the uh, U.S., you know, took a pivot and started to repair that stuff. Like in some of these other countries, they're just going nutso. Like they're doubling down on the, on the indulgences and they're 
something's going to break, guys. Like, they are way behind. Like, we said Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve was behind, but these other governments are even further behind, and something is going to break, guys. So that's why I believe that, yes, these lower levels are possible. But in the meantime, guys, S&P 500 is at the 200 uh, weekly EMA, and that's traditionally been <laughs> traditionally been a point for a bounce and you do see that nice bounce here so yes we can set conditions for a bounce and here are my conditions okay because we work off of conditions and confirmations if we get a bounce that's going to be nice okay and uh, um it should come relatively soon guys like we need to get above 3750 definitely Okay, and then we have to hold above this line right here, 3809. If we can recapture that 3800 zone, then I think that we can get some type of relief rally to the top of this downtrend at least, right? Um, if not, potentially even capture greater bullishness. And then we can talk about macro stuff later. But uh, we have this channel within our downtrend, right? Like this is our macro downtrend. And then we're in this type of uh, channel here. So in this uh, more vertical channel, which is the really scary one, because this is the one that can drop us like three levels at once, right? Like one, one, two, one, two, three, right? Like this is the scary one, right? This is the elevator down. We want to get out of this. We want to get on this 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 slope up here, right? Or on this one. Like, we want to get out of this formation because this is going to send us to hell if we stay in this lane, okay? Like, we got to get out of this lane. And so, to do that, we have to hop on top of this Mario brick, right? Mario has to jump on top of 3,800, hold there. And so, we're also going to be on top of the 800 EMA on the daily, right? Let's see, what what is that on the weekly? Uh, there is no, no equivalent on the weekly. So basically, that's interesting. It, we have to get above the uh, 800 daily, okay? And uh, I haven't talk, talked about the 800 daily uh, quite often, but you can see how it's kind of a supportive thing here. It really did support the price action here. Um, you can see it was very supportive here. And so like this 800 daily is also very a very important EMA and a lower time frame uh, traders on the one hour use it in crypto all of the time. It's an interesting one to uh, have uh, in your pocket. So I'll, you know, I mean, it's not that common, but specialty traders do use that. And I occasionally pull it out uh, because we're talking about these huge falls. I am looking for 800 EMAs these days. Uh, in normal times, I usually don't have to, but, um, guys, like uh, we can get on top of that 800 daily EMA, uh, then we can have a chance to talk about these type of mean reversions, perhaps to the upside and, uh, lengthening this out rather than going for a vertical drop. But, uh, that's my condition for the S and P 500, uh, 3,800 guys, uh, for NASDAQ. Same thing, right? Same thing, a little bit less scary chart, right? The NASDAQ is what gives us a little bit more hope here. Um, however, I didn't really draw this out with the full NASDAQ chart in mind. Uh, this is a little bit of a truncated one, so I may update this using the longer chart, using the uh, IXIC, which is this type of uh, NASDAQ composite. But um, I, I do like using uh, the NAS 100 uh, mini futures. So I'll use this um, until we start to break down to some of these lower levels. Then I may need to do a deeper analysis of the uh, bottom levels with a, a longer, older chart. Um, but even for this one, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, go through it briefly. Uh, we do see that, uh, well, let's just let's go to the weekly for this one to see how we're doing. And we've lost the 200 uh, EMA, but but look at this. We're holding on to the 200 MA, the 200 moving average, simple moving average. So, yeah, I mean, you know, at least we've got that. Right? At least we've got that. And where's my Mario brick? Uh, my Mario brick is right here. So basically it's 11,000. 
690. And we get above that, we sit on top of it, then, you know, we're good for a, a kind of a, an, up, an upside bounce. Let's go to the daily, see what that would look like. Uh, yeah, I can adjust this one. This line hasn't been updated since that pump. So something like this. And, you know, we could go all the way up here and even uh, retest this type of breakdown from this area. All right. See this kind of this kind of internal trend here. So we do have, you know, if we can get on top of this Mario brick. 11,675 ish, let's say. Let me just double check that. Uh, 11,600. And 90. It's in 690. Uh, oh, yeah, I drew it right. Okay, it was it was approximately there. So 11,690. Then as long as we can sit on top of that, like we can make that play to the upside. Otherwise, I'm just thinking we're just checking back to this lower trend like right here which I'm not sure if you can see it too well, but there's like a lower diagonal right here, which comes all the way back to this type of a trend, like all the way back here, kind of sat on it here. Just, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even notice it. But when we broke down from it, it was quite severe. This candle was quite severe. And that was really the same capitulation point as... Uh, the one that I had pointed out on the S&P 500. So, like, yeah, I mean, we might just test that lower one, which would be really bad. That would be a bearish, that would be a bearish retest of our breakdown. What we want to get is a bullish recovery of our breakdown. And so, again, like uh, 11,690. Uh, guys, just quickly, let's go ahead and go to our risk factors. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, US dollar, you hit 114 and then you got smacked down, right? Smacked down, guys. Wow, wow, it pierced 114. Guys, I thought it was going to take much, much longer for the dollar to get here. But, uh, you know, other countries in the world are acting so irresponsible. It's unbelievable, guys. Like, they're acting so irresponsible. I mean, do they have children in their governments? I mean, like, I know... We've had some kind of people with ch childish attitudes in our government, but man, like the the currencies that the dollar is being measured against are just performing so badly, guys. Like they got to get their stuff in order. But look at this. Look at this. Uh, let's turn off my EMAs here. Uh, you know, the dollar basically came up this exponential growth curve, broke down, which was a good sign that we were going to have a breakdown. But the rest of the world decided to do nothing while the U.S. was still making, uh, it was still fighting inflation, right? But the rest of the world wasn't being very aggressive. And so we kept crawling up the underside of the growth curve. And look, we're getting limited right there at the uh, bottom of the growth curve. Like, you got to love these growth curves, guys. I mean, of course you could readjust it, but... Um, it's just interesting how it snakes around, like, just so beautifully, right? Tap, 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 you know, tap, you know? It's like, it's it, it's almost like you're using a line, you know, like a straight line. It's just, it behaves so well. And uh, so what, you know, what would be the biggest disaster would be as if this thing came up here and got on top of that growth curve again. And then, you know, did something up here in an 18 to a 20 zone. That would, I mean, I, I can't believe we're talking about this. I thought it would take, like, years for the dollar to get here. But, and I did expect 120 to be within reach. I did expect 114 to be in reach. I thought it would take years for it to happen. The way that these type of currencies, look at this zone of trading, right? Like, it, like it doesn't do that. And so... I didn't know we were going to enter into the, one of these type of moments. This is just insane. This is 
this this breaks things in the world guys like things will get broken and look look at this look at this beautiful trend line ah oh, dang it trading view is messing with my chart again look at this beautiful trend line uh what the heck man let's go to log what it doesn't work in log either i don't know you know I complained about it, but uh, it's still not working right. For some reason, this chart is just really weird. But uh, anyway, we do have this uh, this trend line here. And then we kind of have this like lower level one, right? So the lower level one proved to be kind of useless, but maybe it's going to retrace to it, right? Oh, look at this. The naked candle comes all the way down to my lower trend line, right? So yeah, I mean, it's not useless. This thing could end up retracing back down to uh, 111, right? 112, 111, 112. And then maybe decide what to do from there. So this thing could have a pullback that could allow for some type of bullish tra uh, trading. And you can see as this thing met resistance, not just, not just my blue line, right? Which uh, goes on a much older chart. Uh, sorry, uh, this one doesn't have enough history. This chart doesn't have enough history to show it. But uh, 114 is an important level. And then we also have this diagonal, right? Which, uh, I don't, oops. Which trading view keeps messing up. And then we have this, um, uh, what else do we have? Oh, we also have the uh, parabolic curve, right? And then we have the top of this trend right here, right? And all of them are converging. So that's really like four lines of resistance converging right here where it's getting rejected from. And hopefully that thing, it sends uh, the uh, DXY down for a nice trading day and hopefully even lower. But uh, the way that other governments are behaving, I just don't have that much faith in it. Um, let's look at the VIX. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, let me let me get off log. Maybe that's... Oh, no. It's on linear as well. Oh, the VIX has broken up. It's broken up into not good for trading area. Is this going to be a fake out and it comes back down? Wow. VIX volatility is spiking, guys. So... Yeah, I mean, this wedge is getting broken, but we did it before to the downside. Maybe it's going to have a little fake out to the upside and then come back down. Just kind of throw people off with all this crazy volatility. But uh, yeah, it's outside of this trend. So, well, it, it still has a chance just to wick. There's 10 hours left in today. You know, these things are kind of... These things kind of play out over multiple days so let's just see where it goes but uh yeah i mean worst case is we keep pushing up on the vix okay and then potentially we could have a big capitulation in the market so watch this space uh it's not good to be above this diagonal uh let's see usdt dominance and uh, like i said just chopping out this wedge that we formed here so and then the worst case is that we break above it again like we did here and then we could chest all the way up to here. And then potentially we break down and we start a new bull run after we do that. So this is my hypothetical uh, kind of like an origin uh, kind of channel for um, USDT. If we if we can retag this and break down, that's going to be like, that's a clue, guys. Like that's like, OK, I want to buy there. I want to buy my assets there. Like if we can break up and like hit this line, I want to buy. I want to buy a lot of stuff there, guys. You know what I mean? So it's bad for the market, but at the same time, like it's good for if you're ready to shop. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, I think uh, this episode has been way too long, but since I did uh, skip an episode uh, yesterday and I've just kind of been kind of chilling this weekend, just thought I'd uh, catch everyone, everyone up on everything. And uh, eh, not really going to go over all these coins you know, I just, Bitcoin is just at an inflection point, And so all of these coins are just at an inflection point, guys. Like, how many times can I repeat the same thing? You know, I did not update the momentum zones for these things. So just ignore the momentum zones on it. But uh, 
I mean, they're 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 all breaking out of these little wedges, right? Or breaking out of these little channels, right? You see this, but they're breaking to the downside, like in a very sickly fashion. And so, if Bitcoin pops, like they're gonna pop. But if Bitcoin breaks down, they're gonna break down. So, you know, they they don't look strong on their own at all. Like they're all positioned to either go to the bottom of their formation or to break down. So, you know, what can I say about that? You know, they're gonna they're gonna follow Bitcoin at this point. They're all waiting for cues from Ethereum and Bitcoin, and we analyzed that in quite good detail. And for their uh, for their part. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are waiting for the stock market, which we also analyzed, including all of the risk factors in the market that are relevant to that. So uh, there you go. Uh, that's your alpha for the day. Uh, stay safe and happy trading.